Hi, this is Tony Malazzo, and you are live and on board with Funny Man Sean Halpin today. Funny Man. Funny Man. Funny Man. That's funny what man. I get. I, I like that. I had to go for that. <laughs> I like funny that. Man. We're on board. Yeah, we are on, on board. On the ship. How do you feel about that? Uh, I was getting kind of nervous when it was rocking a little bit. Yeah? I'm not really, uh, I don't think I'm seasick, but I don't want to chance it. So okay. I'm, so I'm not going to look at so what, anything. Should I, give, should I give you some depends? Or <laughs> what, what, what it just depends. Hey <laughs> <laughs> So have you been on board boats before? Or no? uh, yeah, I've been on, like, fishing out in the lake, you know, just small boats. Um, I went, when I was in the military, I went on an uh, aircraft carrier, but that was just in dock. So this is kind of like that, but smaller. And then I went on... I went down in a sub one time, but we it was on dock too. But there's no way, huh. just you're in a just in a tube. Oh, I yeah, can't. Yeah. No, there's I don't, I don't like that. When people when they go out there for six months or whatever underwater, no way. I could never do that. Oh, my okay. hat goes off to him. Okay. <laughs> how about how about a trip on a sailboat like this? When I was a kid on a sailboat, yeah. I haven't been on a sailboat in probably twenty years. Oh, so you've been on a sailboat? Yeah. Oh, great. So we got to take it out one day. Yeah, let's go out. Yeah, we'll race some catamarans. That's right. Do some. This boat's a little bit slow. It's uh, 1969 Columbia. It's yeah. a vintage sailing yacht, but uh, it was uh, made for pleasure. And I've. Uh, well, it looks like a lot of pleasures going on in here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm there an hour and a half later, but with. Uh, a whole bunch of beautiful ladies in the party. I show up, the party shows up. So. Every time I show up, it's like, oh, the girls were here. Yeah, they left five <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> so what, what happened on the on the 4th in the boat, 4th of July? Oh, uh, 4th of July, we had something uh, here in Marina Del Rey at my yacht club that we called Dingarama. And... Uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, everybody rafts up. We become a navigational hazard. Loads of women, tequila and fire extinguishes, jello shots being flung through the air. <laughs> Tons of great food, shrimp. It's just a great party. But do you only go out in dinghies and small boats? Yeah, that's just that's just a dingarama. And yeah. then hours later, there's a barbecue. Some people take their boat out cruising, whatever. Now, do you has. also do the thing where you? Uh, I always uh, when I lived up in Seattle for a little bit, they had. Uh, where they would uh, put uh, like Christmas lights all over the oh Christmas the, boat parade the, yeah Christmas first week in December uh, yeah great December event. would be a good month for that yeah. right yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. we're doing it in May <laughs> you know I, I would like to do that it would be different it would be different <laughs> they should do they should celebrate Christmas <laughs> they should celebrate Christmas at the halfway point to Christmas yeah yeah go whatever that is go left kind of guys anyway go yeah. left so that, that's perfect. You, yeah. could, you could go right every once in a while. <laughs> I'm never right. Never right, John. Never right. So uh, we went over some boating. Huh? Let's talk about you. In case you don't know who Sean Halpin is, uh, I don't either. Um, I'm not sure Sean does. <laughs> I, I'm, buns. I'm trying to find myself. That's why I do stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I find myself a little bit on stage every time. Yeah. Going, I... I think i'm pretty creepy and then i nah i'm not really and then i go back up and i go yeah i'm pretty creepy <laughs> so yeah uh um, i've seen your shows quite a few times though you are hilarious yeah i'm trying you know just plugging away I, I mean i like you know one reason i got into stand-up is i like making people laugh it just it's like a drug for some reason mm -hmm. because i saw a, a um interview with um jerry lewis one time and he was saying how like he needed to hear laughter every day. It was like a drug, and, it, and that's when it kind of clicked. It's like, fuck, that's what I do, you know? Mm -hmm. Even even with, um, like, just conversations, and, you know, I just like to hear people laugh. So when, you go, when you're able to go up on stage and they laugh, it's good. But, you know, when they don't, you're like, what am I doing wrong? You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? You can, you can have, like, eight good shows. Let's say you're working right. somewhere for, like, a week. You have five good shows. And then there's that one on Sunday that doesn't mm -hmm. go well, and you have to, and you rethink your whole decision making well, process off that just one. Been, yeah, sometimes it could have just been them, the room. There's so many variables. That's yeah. what's really crazy about the whole comedy stand up thing. Yeah, yeah. There's so many variables. You yeah. start overanalyzing. Yeah, you're just like, oh, I gotta, I gotta 
work on my resume tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get up to 30 words a minute by tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's talk, let's talk about some of the stuff you've done, some of the past. Uh, do we want to go over your past? How do you feel about your uh, past? It's... There's some things I can't talk about, but there's some things I can talk about. <laughs> okay, so the things you can talk about, maybe we should save for another show. Uh, we yeah, we could do that. That'd, can't be, talk that'd about. be an exclusive clip on the uh, <laughs> the old podcast. Um, so what can't you talk about? Let's go over that. No, <laughs> I uh, no, I started um, I started out in Dallas doing stand up, oh, and um, I started working at the Improv there. I worked there for like three years. And um, I kind of, I mean, I grew up watching stand up and, and I would, and there was like, I just remember there was one point where I never thought you could do it as a job or as a career. I just thought it didn't even like come into the realm of a possibility, you know, because yeah. so, you know, because my parents weren't the ones that were like, you know, if you have a dream, go for it. You know, they're like, get a job. You're not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to, a box to think outside of that yeah. type of, you know. Yeah. So, um, C comic, what are you crazy? Yeah, no, it didn't even, it didn't even, you know, come into the realm. So, actually, I got a job bouncing. I was playing rugby in college. I got a job bouncing at this piano bar right across this hallway from the com the improv, and it, it was weird because I thought like two days later or two days earlier, you know, it's like I was watching stand ups and I was like, I could do that. You know, and then I got a job there, and I was like, "Wow, I got that job to get me to the improv." So, when I was there, I worked at, worked on getting to the improv. I got into the improv, and then, you know, I started going up there. And um, there would be times when I would work the door, and seat people, and be the MC. Yeah. Huh? So I would, <laughs> I would sit people, <laughs> and then I would do, go do the lights, and then I would go, okay, you know, we have Mitch Hedberg, and blah, 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 and then now come to the stage, and I would go, me, and I would run up there, <laughs> and I would have one of my friends turn off the, the lights, That's fantastic. and if they weren't around, I have to go, hey, <laughs> hey, someone turn off the blinking lights, <laughs> and then, the, but to see the face, because uh, it always, it already magically puts you behind the eight ball when they saw you take their tickets and see them and <laughs> yeah. so I go up there and I could see people's faces like yeah and then they see me and they're like mother uh. <laughs> so it's the guy who gave us our tickets yeah. we paid him two minutes ago and he wasn't funny then <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's so I, tough yeah it's, it's tough I don't think people get all all that a lot of that of yeah well what comics go through yeah, what well, they do for their passion. Because a lot of them think that people just come up, you know, when they blow up, that they're like, oh, they're just out of the water, you know? Yeah. They, and they don't know that they spent fi 15 to 20 years grinding it on the road, mm -hmm. you know? So when someone, lately it hasn't really been that way. People have actually been popping up crazy within two years or whatever. But they're, you know, like Louis C.K. and these, you know, these amazing, amazing comics you know they've been grinding it out for 25 years 20 years 50, oh, yeah. 50 you know so um but it, uh so i did it in dallas for a while and i started um working with like um you know a lot of headliners david tell mitch hedberg pablo francisco mm -hmm. and then this one comic uh freddie soto came through and he's from el paso and um i found out that he was richard pryor's driver when he mm. got a job at the comedy store. So I'm like, oh, he's from Texas, I'm from Texas, you know, I'll figure out what he did. And so I go, hey, is there any way I can take you out to go eat, you know, dinner or something and then pick your brain about comedy? He's like, yeah. So we went out and he goes, and he goes like, what do you want to know? And I'm like, well, how did you do it? Like, what made you just, and he's like, I wanted to be a comic. I somehow realized the comedy store was out there. You know, I saw all the great comics and went there. And he goes, so I just, in my mind, I go, I'm going to move and get a job at the comedy store. Uh -huh. And then again, at that moment, I was like, okay, I'll do that. And so I think a year later, I worked a job, saved up a bunch of money. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I moved out here, and then I started just, I knew where my apartment was, the comedy store, and the improv. That's the only three places. That's all you need to That's know. That's all I know. <laughs> it's one big triangle every Beautiful. night, hanging out Beautiful. every night. And then within like six months, you know, Tommy was like, hey, you know, you're here all the time. You want a job? And I'm like, yeah. So then I, and I had like probably a hundred bucks left out of all the money I saved. Yeah, good timing. 
<laughs> it was like, you know, Comedy Store Improv Strip Club Home. Comedy Store Improv <laughs> Strip Club Home. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, fun stuff. So well, here I am. That's, yeah, doing that's, it. that's where I, uh, I met you at the Comedy Store. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, a cool uh, little, little hangout. I like it because it's real gritty and. It's, isn't it one of the toughest rooms? Yeah, I think the I think the original room's tough because it's you know it's just you, and all bl- against all black you know the yeah. the seats the chairs the room the you know yeah, oh yeah. the vibe yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, it's, it's you the so focus is all on it's it's all on you you know yeah. and what what's cool about the I com- like that Mitzi did a great job at that yeah because there's too many the improv is very distracting. Yeah, the there's, imp- a, there's a lot of things to look at and around. It, a it's few like on the wall. For so. for me, that kind of the the comedy store is is like kind of where you work out, you know, to get on TV or just to work out any set you want to do anywhere else. Because if it works there, it'll work anywhere, basically. And right. the and the improv is almost like I'm gonna get ready for TV because it's you know everything's lit up and you know it just seems. Like there's a different level and a different vibe at the improv, you know. Yeah. And um, but that's what I like about the comedy store because it's like a gym and a workout, and you yeah. punch, you know, and you try to punch the audience in the face, and they punch you five times, and then you try to punch them, you know. <laughs> so, uh, it, at the improv too, the or the comedy store, the vibe there when I, I, cause I, so I got a job working there as a door guy, and it was cool because it was basically Sam Kennison's old job. You know, so because he worked the door there and got, you know, became and so many comics have worked the door there for. I think Mark Marin parked cars there for a little bit, and mm-hmm. you know, John Caparulo and Freddie Locke, you know, all these right. really good guys. And um, so going up there, and then that's how I met Pauly Shore, and I got to go on tour with him. And then after that ended, I went on tour with Tom Green for like six months, oh, seven months, and toured the. Basically toured the world, went to Australia and New York, and played everywhere. It seemed like so. You know, it's I've gotten a lot of stuff out of you know hanging out there and kind of regrouping because once you come from anywhere in the country, mm-hmm. like if you're in Dallas or Austin or somewhere anywhere besides New York and L.A., if you go to one of those places, you kind of you have connections from obviously people you met yeah. but you have to start over again and i'm like mm-hmm. i'm not i'm not getting any younger so i might as well try to start start over earlier right, than right, later right. so yeah it was a good move and um you know i've gotten not a lot out, out of that place and a lot out of the comedy store or yeah. the improv too so yeah it's and, all and fun the, yeah and then the tv stuff started yeah i um when did that start coming uh, i i've been hanging around um with uh, John Huck, good friend of mine, and he's he's always got even behind the scenes like he's gotten me a bunch of jobs. Like he's so, you know, be a uh, he worked on Punked and uh, Room Four Hundred One and all these other shows. And uh, he would always get me. I was like the oldest PA working there. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Do you want a PA on this?" I'm like, "Sure, why not?" You know, and I would go and hang around and eat crafty all day and. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so, and then I started, um, so he actually worked on a project, um, years ago with a guy and recently he, they shot this show. It was kind of like amazing race, but it was serious. And he goes, you know, I want to change the direction on this. I want it to be funny. I want three guys that are friends to go out and do stuff. And they, you know, basically it was cool because they came to us and go, Hey, do you want to do this show? And that like never happens, you know? So for them to come to us and, you know, we did have to do like a little demo reel for them. And and they went, (laughs) my friend Eddie Pence, that is also going to be on the show. They, he edited it and sent it to him and he sent it to us first. And I was like, Oh no, there's no way, you know, because as comics, again, we're so critical of it. And it's funny when you think something's bad and then someone's, Oh my God, I love it. You're like, Oh oh, really? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, I guess we're in, is that it? (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. (laughs) So, yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I mean, I'm excited, but not, like my girlfriend's really excited, and yeah. you know, it's just one of those things. You know how L.A. is like, 
it, when it kicks you in the balls so much, you yeah. want to get numb to uh, it. Yeah, yeah. And then again, you're like, okay, kick me again. <laughs> Yeah, I hate, so. to, I hate to call it jaded, but uh, I'm kind of, <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a contract. I think that, no, I don't, Let's I don't, celebrate. But sometimes I think there's a weird, uh, no. it, there's there's jaded and then there's aware. <laughs> 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 I think you can be, it's it's jaded, aware, and oblivious. Yeah, that's Because it. there's a lot of people that are delusional and oblivious. And they just ignore it all. And they just yeah. go through this and they're, yeah. Rose yeah, but glasses. it's also, too, it's, you know, it, it's faking the funk or you know fake it till you make it or you know yeah. just if perception's bigger than reality i mean you, you know i can you know people pump their self up all the time but it's like yeah i don't you like will, to fool myself yeah <laughs> i want to be able to sleep at night for one yeah and then um you know, it's you gotta just, pay the bills too. It's yeah. like I know you need to know what's realistic. Well, what's my lawyer not, says I should pay, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> quit calling me. <laughs> Checks in the mail. <laughs> Have you written a check lately? I haven't written a check. You don't write checks? I still write checks. I'm not giving up. I am not doing the online banking. I, think, I don't trust it. I am not. I'm I think not, the rent I'm is not doing it. I think the rent is a last. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I still put 2001 on my check just to piss people off. How's it get cashed? Oh, they don't. You don't plan on them getting cashed. That's how you, that's how you get extra days with your rent. You put a, the, oh, wrong the wrong day, day, and they have to call you and go, oh, I'm sorry. And they feel so bad that they don't charge you the, right, uh, right, right. the fee. Yeah, or, yeah sure. or you, um, you send your rent check in, envelope, and then... They, they're going to call you within three days because they check it. And you realize, oh, I didn't put my check in I'll there. I'll send you a fresh one. <laughs> <laughs> Better go put some money in there now. You got to be yeah, able to yeah. stall. I you got to be able to stall. I got it, John. <laughs> wow. I'm from New York. You think I'd have this stuff down? Uh, is this like Dallas, Texas? Maybe I, I should have moved No, this is here. This is here. <laughs> you got it? You picked this all up here? I've been here years. I'm still not on the bandwagon with the... Uh, the rest of the cereal ball. Now, did you do a lot? <laughs> did you do a lot of stand up in New York? I know, you know, uh, I'm an actor and I'm a theater guy. I've been on stage since I'm five. Oh yeah. I started in H E Suite, and um, it's it's been a long road. I jumped on the comedy stage and done some one man stuff also, uh, occasionally a couple of times. But I came out here, and when I got out here. Um, I mostly was focused on film and TV. Yeah. There was no theater. Uh, there's some theater, not enough right. of it, and I couldn't get involved in the right project. So I said, you know what? I'm getting on stage. I'm doing stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was only about uh, two years ago. What's it? I'd like to. I was already hosting these shows. I was hosting. Yeah. Variety but... shows and doing what you know. Yeah. Some some jokes and introducing yeah. people. So. Well, like when um, with theater. You know, you could bounce around. It's like sometimes I get so stressed out on acting, you know, because it's like if you think about it, everyone is waiting on your lines from PAs to sound to directors, uh, uh, the, everybody, everybody. Hundred people. And then if waiting. you mess it up, you're like, ah, so bad. Yeah, the pressure's <laughs> on. It's the a long walk on. back to your car. Yeah. No, see, is. not even a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> back to the car. Like I tell people, like I'm from Texas, and usually in LA, when people, you know, have like, yeah, he won't come out of his trailer. Like if if that ever happened, I've never heard that before. Because back home, if that happens, all you do is call the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're gonna come out of their trailer. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm from New York. They just drag you out. They drag you, yeah, beat no you, and then go. Trailer. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Sean also has his own podcast. Yeah, uh, the Full Count Podcast. Full Count Podcast. Yeah, we, it's like uh, it's just a bait. It's it's kind of sports. We do like five percent sports and then ninety five percent BSing. You know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's uh, fun. Yeah, and uh, it's with my friend John Hawk. And compared uh, to this show where we do a hundred percent, hundred percent BSing. BSing. <laughs> <laughs> they um, well, because the reason and the reason we call it full count is because um, you know it's a baseball term, obviously. Right. Full count. Get your backs against the wall. You know, you have to make a decision. It's kind of like a metaphor for life and comedy or whatever. But John, John actually had testicular cancer, so he has one mm. ball. Okay. So together we have three balls, two, oh, and we're like two that's dicks. Full count. So you guys are crazy. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> 
<laughs> so three balls and we're two dicks. Or two assholes, whatever you want to say. <laughs> but, oh, uh, you guys are nuts. Okay, full count. Yeah. That's a lot of information. I was going to say TMI on that one. <laughs> wow. Okay. So everybody knows I still have two balls. So you that's still good. do. Yeah, but now they know that John is strutting around with one. <laughs> Yeah, we all got to be somewhere. Yeah, it seems like because everybody, you know, it's like when everybody started doing the podcast. I think a lot of comics were like, you know, I'm not going to do one because everyone's doing them. But then you're like, you're doing comedy and everyone else is doing comedy, so do a podcast because it's it's just an <laughs> extension. That is crazy. Yeah, it? it's like, it's like ex- I'm not going to do it. Cause yeah, because we were kind of like. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just get into something like Twitter or Vine or yeah. whatever because you know it's just another outlet, you know. Yeah. And and the the podcasts are fun because people get to you know set up punch on stage is a little bit different than if you you're, you get kind of not really personal with someone, but you know get to know them a little bit better than through just the 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes on stand up, you know. So yeah. But it's just another outlet, and it gives you know, like I I do characters or impressions on on the podcast that I wouldn't do on stage. So it's just another outlet, you know. Yeah. So yeah, oh. I'm gonna write some poems and you know maybe sing. Uh oh. <laughs> I, I, I hope he's joking. <laughs> <laughs> maybe juggle, but then no one would see that. That might be funny. You know, actually, I'm gonna have. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing. Uh, see, that's go left. I'm gonna. Be, <laughs> <laughs> that's go. I like that. I'm gonna do a ventriloquist act on my podcast. That would be great. <laughs> What's wrong? I hear Jeff Dunham on the radio. Come on. Come on. I bring love it. it. I bring love it. it. I love Jeff Dunham. Sean Halpin. Playing have with you ever, his, have playing you, with his meat puppet or something. Have you ever gone to see <laughs> Jeff Dunham? Yes. <laughs> it's like. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just something funny just about it. You're like, I don't like, you know. I'm with his dolls. I, I've, <laughs> se- I've seen people come to Jeff Dunham shows, and um, they'll leave, and they'll go, uh, you know, Jeff Dunham's funny, but that Walter's racist. Like, they don't, they're two different they people to them. They can't differentiate, right? right. I, I believe it. They're people are crazy. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with. That is our audience. Yeah. yeah. I, I've been saying lately, I don't know why, but it, when it gets really awkward on stage, it's like, I realize I need a puppet, you know, because a puppet can get you out of anything. Like if you had oh, a, yeah. if I had a black puppet and I said racist jokes on stage, it's not me saying them. It's yeah, my puppet, yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> sock puppets. Well, you should just make a sock and then puppet. Somebody, they protest my puppet, but not me at the show. <laughs> His damn puppet is not allowed in this club anymore. <laughs> That Sean has to make a big Come on, decision. it's 2013. Why can't a man have a black puppet? <laughs> All right, we're getting off track. It's what are, okay we, with what are we talking about? I don't know. We, we got on to puppets. We got on to... Uh, where the hell are we, Sean? Are, I don't what did even you know. do to We're on a boat, show? man. We're on a boat. We're on a boat. We're on a boat. We're, we're on, on a boat. <laughs> Damn straight, we're on a boat. We should, we should, uh, we should drive this thing to uh, New York. Oh, my God. Do you know how long that would take? We have to go through the Panama Canal. Yeah, I think we can. I think we can. I think we can. It's six months to New York in the sailboat. <laughs> six months. Six you months. You got time? <laughs> you got time? Yeah, yeah, right now I got all the time in the world. We should do that. Oh, we'll do the Yacht Club circuit comedy show. I'll open for him. We'll just stop in harbors. and. That would be a good TV show. That would be, huh? Like have four comics on a boat. NBC. Going you to New York to first. do an open mic. <laughs> Real interesting, Sean. Real interesting. Is anybody on? And they bomb. Is anybody oh, wow, on? That's new. Is anybody on M- <laughs> NBC listening to this? You think? Who knows? I bet they are. Yeah. Peacocks. Well, team Co- Team Coco. Gonna, well, they 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 steal it. I have a copy of the show <laughs> <laughs> that I can I can sue them with. And I've got about uh, about seventy two cents in that jar over there for the attorneys. <laughs> so. All right. Where were we, Sean? Uh, where are you going, Sean? Well, that's, where that's am I going? Oh, where are going? you headed? Where are you headed? Why does this sound like a phone call from my mother? Where are you, are you, are you <laughs> What are you doing? Why don't you see yourself in five years? What are you doing with your life? Oh, um, are you trying to make a difference in your work? 
Are you sending subliminal messages? Why is my mom Jewish all Do you believe in aliens? That's right. I don't know. That's, that's <laughs> my mother. I know. She's it's Italian like I'm a, Jew. I'm a Jewish know. mother now. I don't know. Wow. Um, Everybody's mother sounds like that when I... <laughs> I'm so versatile, Sean. Versatile. Yeah. I got I to gotta work on a, but the only thing, so this is one dilemma I kind of get it. Like, I like, I grew up on Richard Pryor. I loved, you know, Bill Cosby himself. I loved, but I, I liked dirty comedy. Like, oh, Ro really? I like Robert Schimmel, Rogan, David Tell, you know, I just mm. like people that it's almost like honesty, but how do you talk with your friends? You know, so. Wrong and uncensored. Yeah, so. I gotta. That's a lot I, for a lot of people. A lot of people can't take that. They can't, and it, even I guess it's you know like you know got to working on clean sets to get on TV and stuff yeah. without saying the f word is yeah. cool and, but I just I like I like stuff that you know you would want to listen to like sneak down in your basement to listen to because right. your parents you know that's yeah. just yeah that's like that's what I listened to you know growing up but you know. Yeah, even with the Rat Pack shows, you've done the Rat Pack shows, yeah. haven't you? Um, now a couple of people have said, okay, well, I think you should warn people. Uh, you had, like, several comics that were really raw. So now I do more of a raw and uncensored or dirty yeah. divas. Now the, the, we're doing a show coming up yeah. uh, at the Wits End, July 21st, yep. Sunday. Sean Halpin's there. Um, and it's a little classier place. It's going to be a little classier show. Notice I'm giving no. him the warning no. right on the air. No. Here we go. I'm, I'm trying. See? Here we go. He goes, no. No. You know what? I well, think, you're at the well, end, if... so I, do whatever you want, Sean. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring my puppet. and uh... I'm not responsible for you. No, it's funny. I, I, but <laughs> I, I always just like, you know, I, I just like what funny is funny. You know, it's... Yeah. Without, because most comics, you know, or whatever about most... Like me, I got into it because I didn't want to have any rules. You know, I want to be able to mm. say... So you don't have any rules in comedy. Well, but... Yeah, so but... So what do you say when somebody I'm, says, clean show, Sean, like right I, before? I shit, they don't even give you a notice. I shit my pants, and then I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to... Because I, I don't know what to do sometimes, because I do fall back. I Yeah, I curse a little bit. Yeah. I, I tell but you know, my, my act isn't even really dirty. It's just because of... You know, I, I'll talk about sex because we're all adults, right. and it's a, a common subject matter that everybody has, but... I think like it's not my my comedy is not graphically dirty, right? You know, it's like kind of paints a picture, or whatever. But when, when I somebody says something like that, it kind right. of makes you all yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Well, I mean, if you're gonna if you say you know I'm having sex with this woman instead of you know so I'm coming on her face and you know there's there's I think there's relatable type material or there's just this just went from clean to explicit <laughs> rating right there Sean thank you you can edit that out you can edit that out <laughs> <laughs> but see I mean how would you clean that up you know I pleasured myself on her face so well could you say that or could you so I sprinkled that was just as bad I know that's what I'm saying how would you describe that and you go <laughs> you don't Sean you just don't okay Sean you don't See, that's my problem, though. I, I hate right before you go out. I did a Love It show. I forget who was the promoter, but yeah. they said right, be right before right be I went out. That's not fair. Clean show. I went, huh? Yeah. <laughs> there went all my material yeah. I was doing tonight. Yeah. You know, you get up. Uh, I, I usually, at that point, bring the promoter in a little bit, and I'll, right on stage, I'll be like, uh, nipples. Can we talk about nipples? <laughs> What can't we talk about? Oh, they have to be on a cow. Okay, you know, it's... Yeah, I don't like the editing myself either. So I was banging this cow with hard nipples. That how you That's okay. You're okay. Yeah, because you didn't say the F word. No, and you didn't... Who would expect you to really be doing that with a cow? Yeah. Even though you're from Dallas, Texas. Yeah. But there's, you know, like, there's... <laughs> there's been a... I, I feel like a transition coming on. It's always good when you feel something in your writing or you, even you you know transitioning and stuff because yeah. there's a lot of stuff that you know that i you know i want to talk about that like in my family and stuff like that i haven't really talked about so and yeah. i've tried it a couple times on stage but even with like dealing with death and stuff like that that's that's a really hard one for people to swallow sometimes oh, yeah. you know to to make death somehow funny riding the edge yeah so but it's like when they and also too with me sometimes i I've, I've been told a lot that i i can get away with stuff because you know, I don't, it's not, whenever you say something, it's not coming from a, a bad place, you know, like a, a, 
a dark place or whatever, but, so yeah, I'm just, you know, trying to write and be out there and do podcasts and boats. Yeah, good. Keep up the good work. <laughs> next next time, you're going to come back, right? You'll come back to the show? Never. Never, never to this boat. Never to this boat? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Sounds like you've been hanging out with a retail printing. <laughs> But are you excited about this Whitson show? Look, I got flyers here that people can't see it, but they can hear it. Yeah. Look at all these people out. you got on the show. Yeah. You want to name them? How are you getting these people? Look at this lineup. I don't like the cartoon. Dwayne Perkins, Sean Halpin, uh, Bernadette Pauly, Al Ducharme, Henrietta Comras, Casey Balsham, Kristen McHugh, Casey Balsham. Casey Balsham's funny. She oh. is funny. I don't she's care. She's a newbie, but she's she's really funny, and she deserves to be in the lineup. A couple people said, "Oh, she's not a headliner," and I said, uh, "Are you kidding me? Dude, what, I had, you know where she's headed? She's she's headed there." So I've so done, you know. um, like I hate the only thing. Um, this kind of bugs me about female comics when people that are running shows or whatever they'll go. So you ready for a lady? And it's like, nah, it's just give them the same props that you would a regular comic, you know? Oh. <laughs> and people, some some girls don't like that. Uh, I'm not going to name names, but in my green room, I had one of the male comics say to me, why do you have so many ladies? It might as well always be a dirty diva show or a ladies show because more than half or half are ladies. And ladies aren't funny. I didn't I'm, say that. I'm like, wow. <laughs> wow. Ladies aren't fun. I don't, my almost, I don't see one. I would say six out of ten, seven out of ten of my favorite comics are ladies. Yeah, there's a, it's, there's some funny ladies. It just there. sucks that you would when people. Div, I mean, I guess they can divide. It just sucks that they. Div, well, she's a chick comic. No, she's a ch she's a chick that's a comic that's funny. Yeah, you know, and she's a comic. Yeah, I I like working with female comics. Um, so now I put you know. more females in the lineup. Yeah, it's just me that? and eight girls. Yeah. <laughs> there's, always, there's always more chicks than there is guys in my shows. You know that. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, there's, I, uh, there's just a ton of funny chicks. When people in the media and stuff say that chicks aren't funny, I mean, there's a lot of dudes that aren't funny. No <laughs> kidding. No kidding. You know, why, why don't they say dudes aren't funny? But, yeah. um yeah, I, you know, I, Casey's real. I've done several shows with Casey, and we, we, you know, how we'll get on these these gigs and we'll drive. I mean, uh, like two hours to a bar, and it'll be like the the bartender and like three people, and we'll still do a show, you know. Yeah. And she fucking had me howling in the back, <laughs> and it's just all just yeah. So yeah, I, she's and I, good. I like her. Yeah. I really like so, her. Yeah, she's, she's hilarious. Cool. I'll give her a foot up any chance I have. I like her. Your Funny foot man. up or her foot up? Uh, well, I'm only a foot <laughs> tall, so that's not going to be very far. But yeah, she'll always get a spot in my lineups. Always. So this this will come out before the show, right? Yeah, this is coming out right now. Yeah. This will be out in, a couple, in the next two, three days. I'm the same way with my podcast. I'm like, eh, Get two it out days. right away. Two, I give, yeah, I give it like two days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm... Uh, I'm on the Twitter, like doing that. Yeah, why don't you tell everybody Vine. where they can find you, right? Uh, at, everything's basically at my name, so at Sean Halpin, S-H-A-W-N-H-A-L-P-I-N, just Facebook, Twitter, you can type in com Comedian Sean Halpin, um, redoing the website, so it should be up this week, and moving forward, buddy. Yeah. It's like, it, we're, it's like us against them, you know? Us against the world. Them. 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 That's a great movie. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, I, I'm in. The momentum's feeling good. Everything, uh, uh, I've been working hard, and I know you've been working hard. Got this, got this show coming up. We got some TV stuff coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna it's see gonna, a lot of showing on TV. Yeah, it'll be on A and E. The I guess they're changing the title, so I don't even know what it is yet. So hopefully, uh, we'll shoot the pilot this month, and then with the editing or whatever, and then what am I? August. October maybe something will start hitting yeah so that'd be good all right well we're, I'm looking forward to it we'll have to come and have a premiere party in the boat all right good. <laughs> okay girls only <laughs> <laughs> what I know what Sean likes we'll fill it with hookers and booze he's from Dallas he'll love it <laughs> my girlfriend's gonna go listen to this what is he talking about why is he saying those things hey before we sign off 
that's where I want to go. We're going there right now. Oh, uh, where are we going? Tell me about your girl. Uh, How long are you guys together? Uh, almost two years. Almost two years? Yeah. Is the honeymoon over already? Like, you know, everything about each other, all the stuff that's been hidden, and it's all coming <laughs> to the surface, and you hate each other yet? No, I'm just kidding. No. Nah, you know what I mean. Uh, no, it was pretty much at the surface, you know, in the beginning. But, uh, yeah, she's really cool, really supportive, you know. It's like almost like she's my Sharon Osbourne. Like, got me out of a really bad Sean, place. you got to see how you can screw this up now, Sean. Isn't that what we do? You get a good one. like, how can I screw this up? She's supportive. I'm like, I need some raging bitch. I'm like, she's my baby angel from Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and it, sucks, and it sucks when you're, like, not fighting. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what is this not fighting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we always do something, you know. Because I live... But don't you like the fighting? So you can have that great makeup sex, isn't that part? No, no. Uh, is that just me? Yeah. I'm just a psycho. I'm sick. It's me. No. I like having makeup sex when it's not makeup sex. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not makeup sex. Oh my god. I like no. having makeup sex. That's where she wears makeup. <laughs> oh, that kind of makeup sex. We call that cover girl sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you yeah. finally put your makeup on honey. No. <laughs> and we go out to the bedroom tonight because one time she wanted to mess around i was like ah, and, I'm, and you don't want to say i want you to wear makeup or you know because usually we'll go out party or whatever we do we don't really party but we'll go out and you know hang out and then you go home and take off the makeup, take off the dress, da da da, da. And then you go in bed, and we, we look like Ew. we look like two homeless people in bed. <laughs> we're, we're all just normal. <laughs> so I was like, well, I go, well, everybody else gets the the party, and I get the after party. She goes, what do you mean? I, and you know when you step, you put your foot in your fucking mouth. Oh, and yeah, you, oh, yeah. So, so I had to explain. I'm like, why? Well, I, I still like the makeup on still and the sexiness with yeah. the dress. I'm and sure that she, went over good. She, Honey, <laughs> keep your makeup and your clothes on. Yeah, she is. That went over. And then she goes, yeah. and you're just going to stand there looking like that? I'm like, all right, okay. I'll, so okay. I went, I went to the gym. The next, I went to the gym the next day. <laughs> I went to the gym. <laughs> I need to go to the gym. Yeah. Do you, do, you like having, do you like having sex oh. when the girl's tits are hitting you in the face? Wow. Because <laughs> my girlfriend hates when my tits hit her in the face. Oh! <laughs> I knew it was a trick question. <laughs> hey, yo. I got to rephrase. That could be a joke, right? That could be a joke. Sean, I'm thinking it's time to go. <laughs> no, you said nine hours. <laughs> no. On the boat, podcasting it up. That's what I drove all the way here for. I guess I'm just going to hit the stop button and make believe it's still running and uh, All right. we'll just go on for I need, eight and a half we, more I got to get, get some followers off this. Okay, it's <laughs> at Sean Halpin on f Twitter. Facebook, Sean Halpin, S-H-A-W-N-H-A-L-P-I-N. I'm on Vine, I'm on Instagram, and then uh, check out my podcast, the Full Count Podcast. That's right, Full Count Podcast. That's on iTunes too, right? Yeah, you're on iTunes, right? Yeah, I iTunes. Get, and if you're listening to this, hit subscribe. Yeah, what and give you a rating. Yeah, you got to get subscribe. ratings. No, yeah, nobody's giving ratings to the show. What's that about? Let's get some ratings going, huh, guys? Because that's some what the, feedback on that's the how, show. Because that's what I heard. That's how you bump up and get recognized. Yeah. So if people listen, just have them yeah. type of something good, good or bad. Good or bad. No, they'll, it'll be good. It'll be it'll good. It'll be good. It'll be good. Right. That show sucked, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> the only good one was the one with Sean Halpin. No. <laughs> All no, right, we got. All good. Do we, we have to get out of here? We have to end. Ah, uh, yeah. Is there something final you want to leave the listeners with? Food for thought, comedy for thought. Uh, Anything. Do, do do what you want in life, and then um, like I've been laid off before, and it like sucks. And I bet you there's a lot of people who've been laid mm -hmm. off before, and it just blows. But I was thinking the other day when when you get laid, like all you do is work to what get paid and get a vacation yeah so you just have to look at it as like the they just gave you a vacation so that's when you reinvent yourself mm. it's all about life changing yeah you move have to on. do something you love yeah move forward that's yeah. why i love doing black chicks hey oh oh yeah time to go <laughs> all right let's go all right guys it's been great having everybody here listening to sean halpin and tony malazzo we are live and on board from marina del rey harbor 
We'll catch you again soon. This show has been produced by Tony Malazzo, Alyssa Inferna, and David Ringwald. If you'd like to be on board, check us out on Facebook at Tony Malazzo Entertainer, tweet us at Tony Malazzo Live, or snail mail us at P.O. Box 10074, Marina Del Rey, California, 90295.